So we're going to do a review of Mindset by Carol Dweck. And uh, in the background, I'll have some footage of my recent trip to Rancho Loma in Talpa, Texas. Um, so Mindset, uh, my impression of this book, uh, you know, uh, big picture is uh, important lessons within it, uh, but probably could have been like a third the length uh, that it actually was. Uh, the basic concept of the book is that there are two mindsets that you can have. You can either have a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. A uh, fixed mindset is a person who thinks that their character traits are uh, static, that whatever type of person you are, that is who you are going to be for the rest of your life. If you are not a morning person, for example, you will never be a morning person. Um, if you are not good at drawing, you will never be good at drawing. And the people, and, and also the people who are good at drawing, are that way because they are naturally good at it. And people who are, you know, morning people or people who are extroverted, any kind of character trait you can think of, it's uh, the fixed mindset says that's because of some kind of um, permanent trait uh, rather than something um, changeable, I guess. Um, and then the, uh, the growth mindset is the other way, and that says that you can change your character traits. And... Um, and that basically you can make yourself into a morning person or, or into a good artist and that there's benefits and and basically the, the I think the most persuasive um, part of the thesis is that people who have a growth mindset perform better they outperform people who have a fixed mindset even people with a fixed mindset who might initially have the edge um, you know, if, if you were, I don't know, t taking like a, um, an aptitude test and you, you had people, you know, at you know, performing at the 70th percentile and 50th, the people at the 50th percentile, if the people with the 70th percentile had a fixed mindset and the people at the growth had, had people at the 50th percentile had a growth mindset, then basically, and this isn't a study from the book, I'm just sort of making up something similar uh, then the people from the 50th percentile with the growth mindset would still outperform the people in the 70th percentile and the reason is that they believe that they can change and they also find meaning not in um, they I, they find their identity not in like how they perform but rather the work they put into something and it goes it starts from like an early age like when you're a kid if, you, if a parent says oh you're really smart then that's that's uh that's praising someone for having a fixed quality. It's a sort of a fixed mindset um, paradigm of a of a of praise for a kid. Versus if you said, "Wow, you worked really hard on that. I'm so proud uh, of you and how you did on that." Then that's like something that would be a growth mindset type of of praise for a kid. Um, so it, it's after reading the book, I noticed in myself that uh, I, I noticed when I played tennis in a little clinic, I noticed my fixed mindset really coming up because I didn't care at all about learning. All I cared about was beating other people and not embarrassing myself, not failing in front of anybody. I didn't really care if I changed anything about my technique and I'm not a good tennis player. I should be there, I should be out there to change my technique and to and to do it wrong until I eventually learn how to do it right. That's the growth mindset attitude. but. I just noticed, I don't know, this book gave me a new perspective on my own attitude. Um, and so I'm going to try to keep noticing that where it comes up. Um, what else was, uh, was important about it? Um, so uh, people with a growth mindset perform better. Um, people with a fixed mindset are more susceptible to um, uh, setbacks basically like mentally they take losses a lot harder and it's more likely to affect their performance going forward so it basically makes them more fragile at whatever they do um, you know you talk about like um, if a person has a fixed mindset and they get an A plus on their first history project and then the next hist and then the next I don't know history test or something they get a D on it 
then they're like, oh, I'm, I'm bad at this. I don't want to try anymore because my identity is based on how I'm graded and not how hard I work. Um, whereas a person with a growth mindset might get a D on the first project and then they work extra hard on everything else and they figure out, oh, I can actually do better. So um, the point is that you will, you're more likely to, to reach your potential and not be deterred by um, bad news or negative outcomes if you actually um, if you actually have a growth mindset um, the only real critical thing I have to say about this book was that I thought that the there were too many um, too many anecdotes I think it sort of beat the point home beat a dead horse a little bit like after I heard, I felt like Lee Iacocca's estate should have like sued Carol Dweck or something for how much she was just like, I don't know. It seemed a bit over the top and, and like, you've made your point. You don't have to keep telling me stories about this over and over again. And, um, so I don't know, uh, but read the book, read at least the beginning and the end and then the middle, um, do what you want about that's, um, and a valuable book and a valuable lesson recommended to everybody. Thank you for listening.